Preface to Songs for the Millions and Other Poems by Benjamin Stott. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Songs for the Millions and Other Poems by Benjamin Stott of Manchester, Bookbinder, Middleton. Printed and published by W. Horseman, 1843. This little volume is, by permission, humbly dedicated to Thomas Slingsby Duncombe Esquire, M.P., whose disinterested patriotism and eloquent advocacy of the rights of suffering humanity have won for him the esteem and sincere gratitude of the just portion of the living generation, and the truly consoling gratification of knowing that his memory, as an honest man, and that his actions, as an uncorrupted statesman, will be cherished by and live in the hearts of generations yet unborn preface the following humble attempts to clothe the emanations of fervent feeling in the divine garb of poesy are the productions of an almost uneducated mind the author by no means claims any indulgence on this score inasmuch as it has been made an excuse by so many of his predecessors for obtruding their works on the public he nevertheless is conscious that these poems contain many glaring faults and that the critic will find subjects for the full exercise of his vocation should he deem them worthy of his censure or even of his notice they are however with all their imperfections on their heads the sincere aspirations of a heart overflowing with an enthusiastic love of liberty imbued with a devout admiration of the works of nature and an ardent adoration of nature's god under the inspiration of those glorious feelings have they been written in giving them to the world in a collected form the author takes this opportunity of thanking the various editors of periodical literature who have inserted them as detached pieces and also those kind friends who have given him their advice in bringing them through the press he would also inform the reader that they have been written more to gratify an innate love of poesy and of the subjects on which he treats than for publication hence their want of polish and the many errors that they may be found to contain but should the sentiments expressed in them meet with a response from the humblest disciple of truth and freedom the object of the author will be accomplished memoir Benjamin Stott, the author of the following poems, was born at Manchester on the 24th of November, 1813. His father, a hairdresser, and subsequently an auctioneer, was a member of a respectable family in the vicinity of Rochdale, Lancashire. His mother, whose maiden name was Hall, was the descendant of an ancient and highly respectable family, for centuries located at the villages of Hope and Bradwell, near Castleton, in the peak of Derbyshire. The subject of this memoir was the youngest of thirteen children, and was, unfortunately, deprived of both his parents when he was under six years of age. A maiden aunt, the sister of his mother, who supplied the place of his deceased parents, nobly struggled by persevering industry in fustian cutting to keep him from want until he attained his ninth year. At this period he was admitted through the exertions of the friends of his late father, into Chetham's Hospital, commonly called the Manchester College. Previously to this he had, however, at the National Free School, Granby Row, Manchester, received the simple rudiments of education, namely, being taught to read and to write. These acquirements were of great advantage to him in gaining admission into the hospital. During his stay at this excellent but much abused institution, from the year 1822 to 1827, he made little progress in learning, from the education of the boys being so shamefully neglected. On leaving the college, he was apprenticed to a bookbinder, to which business he served seven years, and has since worked at it as a journeyman. He was never out of his native town of Manchester, except on one occasion, when the business of a society to which he belongs led him to the Isle of Man. It may be truly said of him that he has had few opportunities of looking on the sublime and varied face of nature, save through an atmosphere polluted with smoke, belched from a thousand chimneys in this large manufacturing district. 
he has however to counteract this disadvantage had an opportunity from the business that he follows of cultivating his ardent love of literature we may say of him had his mind been better cultivated we might have expected better things end of preface part one of songs for the millions and other poems by benjamin stott this librivox recording is in the public domain songs for the millions number one millions arouse millions arouse the voice of freedom cries and liberty re-echoes back the call ye sons of toil from slavery arise unloose your fetters and shake off your thrall tyrants are slackening their mad career their guilty souls are paralysed with fear with firm resolve your sacred rights demand in manly rectitude put forth your claim show all your love for home and fatherland restore from infamy your country's name be wise be just your holy cause is good ye will obtain it without shedding blood ye are industrious yet sore distressed ye are enduring yet your grief is great your generous hearts although ye are oppressed seek not the devastation of the state your soul's desire is pure for ye would fain blot out base slavery's ignoble stain a nation's voice distinct and clear and loud with mighty force is heard throughout the land it comes like thunder bursting from a cloud no tyrant's minions can the shock withstand its theme is freedom freedom to the slave food to the hungered honour to the brave o oh, virtuous liberty thou shalt be ours terror of despots tyranny's destroyer not usurpation nor her thousand powers shall quench within us thy ethereal fire we struggle nobly for we pants for thee we writhe in shackles yet our souls are free we see before us all that gives us might sure harbinger of harmony and love wisdom unfolds a gleam of glorious light refreshing as the rain from heaven above the streams of knowledge swift as rushing wind are pouring pure from out the human mind hope millions hope for soon ye shall rejoice corruption's cure already is applied tyrants are deaf but god hath heard your voice no longer can your pleadings be denied as sound of cannon o'er the ocean booms by force unchecked the reign of freedom comes number two o glorious liberty o glorious liberty thy name inspires the souls of slaves with strong desires and fierce as unconsuming fires they burn with ardour to enjoy thee they know that thou by force and frauds are stifled by the despot swords they know that chains and racks and cords are used by tyrants to destroy thee and knowing this with noble zeal they strive their vengeance to conceal intensely deeply do they feel the baseness of their cowerings the inward groan the stifled sigh the vacant gazing tearless eye each outward sign of misery are tokens of their sufferings one hope alone their heart sustains tis dearer than the miser's gains tis stronger than the tyrant's chains and sure and pure and precious tis that dispels their heartfelt grief tis that which gives them sweet relief tis that will make their sufferings brief o blessed gift and gracious men call it knowledge righteous word best gift of god by all adored the reign of freedom is restored where'er its seeds are planted before it despotism quaileth the blood-red sword before it faileth with truth alone its eye prevaileth fair fearless and undaunted hail nations hail the glorious day whose onward march brooks no delay oppressors tremble with dismay equality approacheth peace supersedeth brutal force nor rich nor poor are made the worse but he deserves a nation's curse on its rights encroacheth knowing our rights we do them claim in liberty and freedom's name we seek for truth and not for fame 
no mortal can defeat us tyrants beware fell hunger craves you shall not starve us to our graves nor will we live to be your slaves you never more shall cheat us number three a song for the dungeoned patriot a song for the dungeoned patriot let myriad voices join it hath not birth in idle mirth nor the maddening fumes of wine it emanates from sympathy to soothe the kindred soul and doth rejoice in freedom's voice which knoweth no control it speaks in admiration of the fearless and the brave the flatterer's lies it doth despise and the cringing courtier knave and where is he so base of heart that would not swell the strain that would not lend his voice to rend the hated tyrant's chain all honour to the patriot he shall for ever be the terror of the tyrant and the champion of the free bondsman behold that mighty mind within a dungeon's gloom which well may claim the horrid name of a loathsome living tomb erect he stands and free in heart though manacled in limb his soul disdains the tyrant's chains they cannot conquer him he quaileth not with coward fear he uttereth not a groan though poisoned air and prison fare have worn him to the bone he grieveth not that tyranny his body hath confined his mind is fraught with one great thought the freedom of mankind all honour to the patriot he shall for ever be the terror of the tyrant and the champion of the free the tyrant in the palace hall hath said with savage joy by chains secured in stony moored the patriot will die that odious shout for liberty will from the land depart the lion caged by wrongs enraged will burst his mighty heart and thus his fiendish soul exults with its wonted thirst for blood o'er all the woes which freedom's foes have, have heaped upon the good but let him not forget the sword suspended by a thread which we are told in days of old hung o'er a despot's head all honour to the patriot he shall for ever be the terror of the tyrant and the champion of the free ye millions that are groaning now beneath oppression's yoke by orphans tears and widows prayers the aid of god invoke plead with an earnest zeal and strive by every moral power to rid the land from slavery's brand which over it doth lower think on the honoured patriot now suffering for your sakes and nobly prove you feel the love which sympathy awakes unite be firm that den of death shall soon disgorge its prey ye soon shall see the patriot free thrice happy glorious day all honour to the patriot he shall for ever be the terror of the tyrant and the champion of the free number four great god of the universe great god of the universe bounteous and good vouchsafe to the millions thy powerful aid the poor of thy people are pining for food for the hand of oppression upon them is laid they are bent to the earth by the weight of their woes and the wealthy and great are their bitterest foes but thou in thy mercy wilt hearken their prayers the poor shall be fed and the captive set free and the despot shall die who impiously dares to oppose the designs of thy people and thee the millions no longer ignobly shall cower to the tyrant usurper or minion of power the spirit of freedom awakes to new birth for wisdom with purity beams on the mind as the soft rain from heaven doth nourish the earth so knowledge refresheth the hearts of mankind it filleth the soul with exceeding delight it proclaimeth the power of right over might the bloodthirsty sword all reeking with gore the murderous cannon whose contents rain death shall be useless and vain they shall perish before the spirits of knowledge whose odorous breath gives life unto liberty freedom to slaves and death and dishonour to tyrants and knaves working millions rejoice for the bright rays of truth with radiant effulgence are finding their way alike to the bosoms of manhood and youth even now is the dawn of that glorious day when man shall be happy and fearless and free 
and grief shall give place unto gladness and glee number five gaunt famine rides rampant gaunt famine rides rampant o'er all the land and none but the drones can his power withstand the industrious bees that produce the wealth are his victims alone and he kills by stealth for the wounds which he makes they never bleed although they are painful and piercing indeed the wasted form when the soul is dead tells the tale that it died for want of bread o gracious god that governs all thy attributes are wise and good arise and make the tyrants fall that rob the poor of life and food how hard is the fate of the suffering poor what toil and privation and pain they endure and yet they are patient forbearing and kind though the drones of the earth are against them combined humanity shudders with grief and despair when it thinks and reflects on their woes and their care and the heart of the patriot burns with desire that the days of their thraldom may quickly expire o gracious god that governs all thy attributes are wise and good arise and make the tyrants fall that rob the poor of life and food monopolists despots and tyrants are strong they heap on the poor oppression and wrong they snatch from the hungered the fruits of the sod and render abortive the blessings of god o oh, shame on the priest that would cant and would pray and persuade the sad millions to yield to his sway and cursed be the traitor whose tongue can beguile who can plunder and rob and betray with a smile o oh, gracious god that governs all thy attributes are wise and good arise and make the tyrants fall that rob the poor of life and food may blessings be poured on the patriot's head may he live to see tyranny prostrate and dead how his heart will exult with a godlike delight when justice shall conquer the power of might ye friends of mankind who are anxious to see the day of redemption when all shall be free lend lend your assistance chained liberty cries be firm and the spirit of tyranny dies o gracious god that governs all thy attributes are wise and good arise and make the tyrants fall that rob the poor of life and food number six how long will the millions how long will the millions sweat and toil to pamper the lordlings bastard brats how long will they till the fruitful soil to be starved by the base aristocrats how long will they bear the galling yoke ere their bonds shall burst their chains be broke and vengeance come down like a thunderstroke the spirit of freedom yearns and bleeds and liberty lies in patriots graves whilst the monster tyrant's ear unheeds the suffering wail of weeping slaves but shall mankind for ever bear the stings of woe and grief and care and live and die in dark despair forbid it heaven and all the powers that rule the universal world to a better that this globe of ours mid lightning's flashes swift were hurled and with it all the human race into the gulf of endless space further than mortal ken can trace bondsmen and slaves in every clime your voices raise in freedom's cause despots be wise be wise in time remember it is nature's laws that make men equal and dare ye in hellish conclave met agree to alter nature's wise decree vain is your wish your strong desire can never never be obtained ye cannot quench fair freedom's fire though ye of blood a deluge reigned seek in the rolls of lasting fame there shall ye find each honoured name whose memory feeds the sacred flame oh may that flame burn fierce and bright within the breasts of all mankind may knowledge pour a flood of light from out the intellectual mind a light that shall illume the earth whose genial rays shall soon give birth to glorious liberty that boon of worth number seven a shout for freedom a shout for freedom be it loud and long 
earnest and heartfelt manly clear and strong let it re-echo through the dungeon grave where groans with agony the living slave in fetters bound the damps of death among let it ascend the vaulted roof of heaven and with prayer sincere invoke his aid by whom all good is given to give what man holds dear the blessed boon of liberty oh let it brave the hated brand of slavery and o'er hill and wave reverberate filling all air and space with glorious tidings to the human race a shout for freedom let the free-born mind which tyrants cannot quail nor quench nor blind give energy and strength unto the sound which shall the despot's daring deeds confound oh may it ride upon the wings of wind awaking liberty to universal birth shedding a ray of light upon all nations of the fair-formed earth arousing into might the power of unity and truth and love dispensing rights which mercy's god above through all his works hath shown with blessed grace to be his equal gift to all the human race a shout for freedom join ye toiling slaves bear ye no longer burdens for the knaves why drive and bind ye for their gains with rods of iron and galling chains into your early and ignoble graves up and be doing friends of man and truth they cannot long resist the claim of maid and matron age and youth despots of earth desist to practise villainy oppress no more your fellow mortals lest ye should deplore the retribution which none can assuage when men shall lose their reason in their rage number eight old england old england they call thee the land of the free the land of the just of the virtuous and brave and the theme of their song in their drunken glee is to boast of the succour thou givest to the slave but ah they forget while resounding thy praise to tell of the sufferings endured on thy soil and the overfed drones when their voices they raise never think on the fate of the poor sons of toil but the bard shall be bold and the tale shall be told and misery no longer with mockery be treated to all nations on earth the great truth shall go forth till the league and the lie of the knaves be defeated old england their fulsome laudations are lies and to boast of thy freedom is wasting of breath that country is cursed where industry dies and the labouring slave is starved unto death and is it not so good old england with thee bear witness the records that teem from thy press it is mockery to call thee the land of the free thou art filled with oppression and grief and distress for class legislation and grinding taxation are rampant and rife in thy odious laws the producers of wealth they are starved by stealth and the tyrants protected from whence spring the cause old england tis true thou art fallen and degraded with patience thou bearest foul slavery's brand the rights of thy sons are by tyrants invaded and their minions in livery are spread o'er the land thy peasantry famous for true hospitality are sunk into paupers or starved into graves thy gendarme police force with despot formality now rules thee with rods like a nation of slaves ye men of great britain who stoop to be spit on how long will you crouch in your free birthrights barter up arouse ye and claim in your god's holy name the only hope left ye your glorious charter number nine we will be free we will be free the millions cry and tyrants tremble on their thrones the voice of nations rends the sky god hears on earth the piteous moans of myriad mortals chained and bound his image prostrate on the ground in agony and anguish groans he sees the poor and well he knows what they endure their grief and woes despots beware be wise have care he surely will revenge him on their foes we will be free again that cry bursts on oppression's startled ear the glorious sound will never die sweet liberty shall never fear the tyrant nor the dastard knave the minion nor the crouching slave who bends and bows when he is near 
none can control the free-born mind the unfettered soul is never blind to nature's laws and freedom's cause but yearns for happiness for all mankind we will be free what power shall dare to stop that tide which slavery blights before high heaven we vow and swear to claim and have our manhood's rights millions subscribe to this decree we will be free we will be free no bribe can your this will of ours to keep secure usurped powers we make our claim in freedom's name we will despise the knave who stoops and cowers number ten our god is good our god is good his works are fair his gifts to man are rich and rare his holy presence everywhere o'er land and sea proclaims that all should equal share sweet liberty the air with sounds of freedom rings whene'er the lark his carol sings whene'er the bee bestirs his wings from tiny bird and joyful twittering insect things that sound is heard tis first of nature's wise decrees it floats upon the healthful breeze it speaketh in the rustling trees without control it rolls o'er waves of mighty seas from pole to pole wherever mortal man hath been in deserts wild or prairies green in storm or solitude serene on hills or plains he hath in nature's kingdom seen that freedom reigns dear liberty foul slavery's ban destroy thee tyrants never can for when the flight of time began god made all free he breathed into the soul of man pure love for thee that love inspired great bruce and tell before them despots fled and fell that love hath often wrung the knell of coward knaves whose powerful villainies compel men to be slaves and yet that love shall millions bless its power will all their wrongs redress base tyranny shall soon confess the rights of all then woe to him that dare oppress with chains and thrall for god is good his works are fair his gifts to man are rich and rare his holy presence everywhere o'er land and sea proclaims that all should equal share sweet liberty number eleven beware ye white slaves beware ye white slaves of old england beware your dastard oppressors are fiendish and base their spies are abroad to betray and ensnare to bring you to ruin to death and disgrace they are thirsting for blood and impatient to spoil the prospects of freedom which all now enjoy they have soldiers to crush you who live by your toil then beware of the infamous traitor and spy be firm and unite but be cautious in words on your prudence depends the success of your cause remember policemen have bludgeons and swords and unjust protection from despotic laws the press is corrupt and knaves they can find who will perjure their souls and swear truth is a lie then producers of wealth be not wilfully blind but beware of the infamous traitor and spy tis true that your sufferings are grievous and great and death from starvation you constantly fear while a proud pampered priesthood would teach you to wait for that comfort in heaven they rob you of here tis true ye are goaded by insult and wrong but justice will come be united and wise the weak shall not ever be slaves to the strong then beware of the tyrants their traitors and spies celestial freedom the birthright of all inert in our bosoms inhaled by our breath thy spirit abhors both oppression and thrall we still live in hope for thee even to death o oh, let thy bright presence enliven our land the free-born will despots and dungeons despise they will purge the fair earth from slavery's brand and exterminate tyrants and traitors and spies number twelve let us sing a glad song let us sing a glad song in sweet liberty's praise our hope and our glory our wish and desire let us tell to the world when our voices we raise that there burns in our bosoms unquenchable fire let us waken from apathy bondsmen and slaves and strive to unloosen the fetters that bind them 
let us swear by the patriots in premature graves that we will oppose tyrants wherever we find them the fair land of our fathers we love and revere we are wishful to live by industry and toil but we will not be ruled by oppression and fear nor robbed of our share in the fruits of the soil for the fountains of knowledge have opened our eyes we no more can be awed by the tyrant's dread nod the usurper and despot alike we despise and we will not bow down before aught but our god let us cease not nor rest till our rights they restore us all ye that love liberty join in the song we have slavery behind us and freedom before us we have truth against falsehood and right against wrong then onward still onward our cry be for ever god smiles on our effort to soothe the distressed and the last link in slavery's chain we will sever ere we give up the struggle to shield the oppressed we know that our tyrants will strive to subdue us they have knaves to commit us and soldiers to kill they will deal out the justice of despots unto us and the grave and the dungeon endeavour to fill but they never can conquer the spirit within us it cannot be broken by torture nor chain no bribe from the pursuit of freedom can win us and their killings and dungeonings all are in vain we all were born equal we all were born free the divine gift of reason to all has been given and woe to the tyrant accursed be he who would alter the law that was founded in heaven then arouse thee britannia and prove to the world that liberty yet shall exist in thy land when the fair flag of freedom again is unfurled nor tyrants nor despots its powers shall withstand number thirteen king death king death has now mounted his brave white steed and he rideth abroad as a furious speed the poor are dying with hunger and grief and the famine that rageth exceedeth belief but yet the bishop with bible in hand in mockery calls it a christian land while he helpeth king death to make it his den by his preaching patience to starving men the hundreds are pampered the few overfed while the millions are pining for want of bread monopolists fatten in luxurious ease but the poor are the victims of death and disease and class legislation of freedom the curse doth the natural rights of the people reverse it feedeth corruption in church and in state where the virtue is small and the vice it is great then wake from your apathy friends of mankind and scatter your petty disputes to the wind your noble exertions will meet with success and nations unborn shall your memories bless unfurl ye the fair flag of freedom and swear that knowing your rights to maintain them ye dare it were better to die in sweet liberty's cause than to live like a slave under tyranny's laws millions claim ye the suffrage your inherent right exalt all your voices exhibit your might the minions of tyrants will tremble with fear at the bold onward march of a nation's career resolve to be free in the fair face of day and woe be to them that your progress would stay a people united their wishes will gain and the struggle for freedom shall not be in vain number fourteen god of the world god of the world in mercy lend thine ear unto a starving nation's grievous prayer let not the stifled sigh and burning tear be vain appeals for thy protecting care o oh, stretch thy strong right arm to succour those who hunger's pangs and poverty endure god of the millions crush thy people's foes and in thy mercy save the suffering poor thou great first cause eternal just and good whose attributes are charity and love shall not thy people share alike the food which thou hast sent in plenty from above shall partial laws made by usurped power for ever curse the nations of the earth shall millions of thine image ever cower and glorious freedom never wake to birth is it thy will that men shall grieve and pine and die unsuccoured helpless and unknown thou who can see the slavery in the mine 
thou who canst hear from thence the miners groan thou willest not that this should ever be in all thy works fair purity is found the winds the waves all elements are free shall men alone in fetters base be found perish the minion formed of basest clod whose dastard soul ignobly does not dare in face of day to supplicate his god that all may equal privileges share giver of life and light come to our aid soothe thou our anguish listen to our call let the oppressors in the dust be laid and freedom give exulting joy to all thou who controllest the planets in their course and rulest the varying seasons of the year whose hand can stay the lightning's mighty force and stop the whirlwind in its mad career thou who givest time and space its breadth and length and in the justice of mankind delights give to thy people fortitude and strength that they may gain their long-lost sacred rights number fifteen friends of freedom friends of freedom swell the strain that peals across the atlantic main and echoes wide o'er hill and plain arousing men to liberty your every moral power awake bestir yourselves for freedom's sake base slavery's chains shall snap and break before your godlike energy lift up your faces from the dust your cause is wholly pure and just in freedom's god put all your trust be he your hope and anchor give to the world your firm decree that britons will they will be free shout shout for glorious liberty it will succeed and conquer vain tyrants that would make us slaves go look upon the patriots graves and study there ye dastard knaves the folly of your knavery what think ye to subdue the mind which god hath given to mankind ye surely will for ever find men will not suffer slavery though ye have prisons to immure the poor and friends unto the poor yet think not basely to allure the flock from they who lead them vain are your dungeons idly vain the rack the torture and the chain ye neither can nor shall restrain our strong desire for freedom we ask for rights by nature given sanctioned and ratified by heaven for which our forefathers have striven on the battlefield and wave we wish to make no man our foe for all are equal born we know and all must surely surely go to the republic of the grave number sixteen the britons may boast the britons may boast of their sea-girt isle they may call it the land of the fair and the free they may tell of its climate its culture and soil and sing in the praise of its old oak tree they may send forth their ships o'er the great salt sea affecting to scorn all the nations of earth but let the inquiry of true britons be what the freedom of englishmen really is worth it is true that this island is fruitful and fair that plenty aboundeth in garden and field that god in his goodness has made it his care and the beauties of nature has fully revealed the sun shineth bright on its mountains and plains its sons they are brave and its daughters are fair but alas o'er its destiny tyranny reigns and thousands are driven to death and despair the patriot who dares to unbosom his mind who dares to give utterance to truth without guise in this land where the goddess of justice is blind is hunted by perjurers villains and spies and should he dare call for political right and tell to the world how humanity grieves he is dragged from his bed in the dead of the night and crammed in a dungeon mid felons and thieves in derision he next is arraigned at the bar and justice is dealt him with unsparing hand he is sent from his country and kindred afar to pine and to die in a pestilent land o oh god of the world shall it ever be so it shall not if mercy thine attribute be the time is approaching when sorrows and woes shall fly from the earth and mankind shall be free then come blessed time we have prayed for so long great giver of liberty come to our aid for virtue is weak and foul vice it is strong and tyranny's tortures have made men afraid 
but they never no never can quench the pure flame it burns in our bosom is fanned by our breath we will cling to the love of fair freedom's dear name and the hope to enjoy it shall cease but with death number seventeen it comes it comes it comes it comes the glorious day when holy freedom shall prevail when battle strife and bloody fray shall be as a forgotten tale when virtue shall triumphant rise and vice be swept from off the earth when man shall look up to the skies and bless the god that gave him birth when joy and charity and peace and love shall cheer the human heart when hate shall die and discord cease and treachery from the world depart ye millions that all sorrows share and mist of plenty starve and pine be joyful for your constant prayer hath reached the throne of heaven divine he who can comfort ye hath sent his angel to make loud proclaim that truth shall reign each knee be bent for knowledge is that angel's name o blessed messenger of heaven hail hail to thee the soul's delight thy mission hath been surely given to turn our darkness into light thy presence righteous rapture brings men feel thy power and own thy sway beneath the shadow of thy wings injustice and deceit decay those rights usurped by the few unto the many thou wilt give proving the proverb to be true that all shall free and equal live then let mankind embrace thy form the foretaste of immortal life thy fruits alone can quell the storm of brutal ignorance and strife be it the poet's pride to praise thy good effects thy moral power who sees thy pure resplendent rays descending in a genial shower inspire his heart his head and pen to pioneer thy glorious reign to soothe the souls of savage men and heal the pangs of mental pain knowledge the patriot's heart thou cheers freedom revives where'er thou goes but tyrants breasts are filled with fears for thy disciples are their foes what fool is he who would stop thy course or struggle to impede thy way or all the earth thy mighty force rolls on in triumph day by day thy works shall cause men to combine and cleanse corruption to the core thou hast the power the task be thine the reign of freedom to restore end of part one part two of songs for the millions and other poems by benjamin stott this librivox recording is in the public domain miscellaneous poems odd fellowship a poem the great principle of odd fellowship is to bring into practice the godlike virtue of charity in its broadest sense this virtue which fills the heart of man with pure benevolence and sheds its benign and soothing influence alike over the bed of painful and lingering affliction the unfortunate and distressed and the helplessness of the aged and infirm is of all others the most divine in its essence and effective in its dispensations one odd fellowship how strange uncouth a name philanthropy hath chosen to convey her purest streams adown the tide of fame long may her soothing holy influence sway the hearts of all mankind she brings the day when charity and friendship shall combine their heavenly joys together making gay and fair the path of life when sun shall shine upon a world blessed with the love of god divine Two our great creator surely loves the cause of pure odd fellowship benign and meek for it hath birth in his eternal laws its constant aim is ever still to seek and succour wretchedness to shield the weak and powerless endeavouring to allay the sufferings of the poor these acts bespeak a sympathy of soul they well display our nature's noblest traits which never can decay Three blessed odd fellowship thy aim and end is to promote the peace of man on earth the sick to cheer the friendless to befriend 
oh that my yearning heart could speak thy worth thrice happy they who unto thee gave birth a glorious reward is theirs to gain in that immortal life where neither dearth disease nor famine ever more shall reign nor grief nor misery shall be nor aught of pain for how many tales delightful to rehearse the annals of thine history unfold how well deserving in harmonious verse thy countless good effects are to be told sure as the dross is severed from the gold when it hath passed the burning furnace through so sure odd fellowship is now enrolled among those virtues which are good and true with friendship and with love it doth each heart imbue five when men unite to help the sore oppressed that unity is worthy of their race protectors of the suffering and distressed immutable and just their deeds find grace and favour in the sight of god mankind embrace their principles and over all the earth abroad at home in every clime and place they are respected for their moral worth and from their kindness gratitude and joy have birth six how sweet the task to soothe the widow's woe to calm the mind the drooping heart to cheer to feel with ecstasy the genial glow the soul enjoys that dries the orphan's tear to hush the inward sigh the anxious fear and bring relief where poverty prevails to make the home of wretchedness more dear and watch with care when hope or reason fails or ills or take which gentle sympathy bewails seven ye frugal sons of toil your country's pride unite as brethren both in heart and mind sow ye the seeds of friendship far and wide dispense the precious gift to all mankind odd fellowship the souls of all shall find the heavenly banner soon shall be unfurled ignorance and prejudice shall fall behind grim superstition from its throne be hurled and thou odd fellowship shalt renovate the world eight thy principles are founded on the rock of truth and purity they will withstand the rude attempts of all who fain would mock the just endeavours of thy generous hand to scatter peace and plenty o'er the land thy works reprove the foul reviler's tongue thou hast not built thine house upon the sand thy glory ever will shine forth so long as virtue is superior to vice or right to wrong nine source of benevolence thy form is fair and like a spreading tree that doth adorn the fertile earth thy grateful branches bear delicious fruit which nations yet unborn shall reap with joy the weary and forlorn are ever welcome to partake of thee beautiful and fair as is the summer's morn thy every thought and action still shall be to make the mortal life of man pure good and free Ten, unknown to thee be bickering and strife of party prejudice or factious hate unknown to thee that pestilence of life the mad ambition that would rule the state the stubborn sceptic prying into fate shun as a plague thy duty be to love all that is wisely good or truly great so thou by meek humility shalt prove a splendid emanation from a god above eleven in thee shall man consoling solace find for all his earthly grief for bitter woes the lame the poor the aged and the blind have succour found since thy fair star arose dispensing blessings even to thy foes the friends of man thy principles admire a true odd fellow wheresoe'er he goes should he a shelter or a friend require shall find them both can human nature more desire twelve hundreds of systems have been tried and failed whereby man's happiness might be secured thousands of life bereft have been bewailed and thousands been in dungeons dark immured pain cruel pain and grief have been endured but thou odd fellowship thy simple plan hath blessings to thy followers ensured for ne'er since time his onward course began hath aught been more beneficent to mortal man thirteen by what great effort shalt thou e'er attain the reign of love thou pantest to secure 
how shall thy longing spirit ever gain an equal happiness for rich and poor a time when guilt and vice shall cease to lure and degradation flee the human mind these precious gifts thy principles ensure for wheresoe'er thou art there shall we find the heavenly boon of charity amongst mankind fourteen can we by faith enjoy or prayer implore a nobler treasure on this earth below than charity whose virtues are a store of greatest blessings man can ever know may friendship love and truth spontaneous grow and spread the principles of that just band which in the ranks of brotherhood doth go with love in heart and fellowship in hand fanning the flames of truth with holy friendship's wand fifteen o blessed charity thy fruits can make a pure celestial paradise on earth first attribute of god thy charms awake the heart of feeling and the soul of worth whose actions unto heavenly joys give birth and sow the seeds of love o'er all the land those glorious seeds in beauty bringing forth all that is truly great sublime and grand all that humanity could wish or heaven command sixteen what sweet sensations with thy name arise associations righteous fair and good the soul drinks deep of thy ecstatic joys the mind is filled with rich delicious food in thy great cause have martyrs shed their blood holy examples of thy precepts mild thy simple law is ever understood in thronged city or in desert wild tis loved by man and matron maid and child seventeen nations rejoice the reign of peace draws nigh the boon of love to mortal man is given cloudless and clear as is the summer sky this earth becomes when from its face are driven vice and hypocrisy and all o oh, bounteous heaven that would our minds with thoughts unholy fill as knotted oak by thunderstroke is riven the power of virtue conquereth every ill proclaiming loud that truth is great and glorious still eighteen munificence of heart what dear delights thy true possession doth to man afford thou canst allay the poverty that blights sooner than treasure from the miser's hoard blessed are thy actions oft hast thou restored peace to the mind where pining sorrow breeds and given comfort when the soldier's sword had clothed fair woman in the widow's weeds or made the orphan's tears fall o'er the warrior's deeds nineteen what power is that which charms the souls of men that lights the flame of friendship in the breast that prompts the heart to generous actions when we see our brethren sickly and distressed that soothes the sorrows of the sore oppressed and grasps the hand with fervent love sincere that gives the weary wanderer food and rest and brings the kindred minds of men more near to heavenly happiness and lasting friendship dear twenty tis thine odd fellowship thine is the power from whence these glorious feelings have their birth thou art to man as is the genial shower when summer's sun hath parched the fertile earth or like the dew which morning's breath sends forth thy gentle influence sways the generous mind gives life to all in man of genuine worth engenders love divine for human kind wherein the noblest traits of nature are combined twenty one long mayst thou flourish in immortal youth fountain of friendship flower of every age emblem of happiness and type of truth beloved alike by simple and by sage thy records need no aid of pompous page so long as time exists they will endure mayst thou for ever selfishness assuage make mortal man on earth free good and pure that he immortal life may worthily secure an ode to liberty dear theme on which my muse delights to dwell again my lowly harp shall speak thy praise inspire my soul with fervid truth to tell the joys that live in thy fair works and ways let not the proud despise my humble lays nor spurn their subjects with contemptuous scorn let not the poor forget that thy bright rays are dazzling in the sunbeams of the morn 
o oh, glorious liberty thy prototype is born in every insect that disports in air the wind that waves the fields of yellow corn doth on its wings thy godlike spirit bear thy voice is in the roaring of the storm thy force is in the dash of ocean's waves thy mild but mighty pure celestial form fills high with hope the souls of suffering slaves the simple flowers that deck the patriot's graves the lark that sings melodious in his flight the limpid stream whose lucid water laves the daisy banks and makes them green and bright a thousand choristers in dell and grove on moor and mountain and in shady woods the busy bees that through the meadows rove and myriad fishes in the mighty floods the eagle towering o'er the rocky steep the wild birds skimming o'er the broad blue sea the rush of winds that o'er the waters sweep and sounds that fill the beauteous world with glee the playful lambs that bask in sun and shade the savage beasts that roam the forest free all great and glorious things that god hath made are emblems dearest liberty of thee ye sons of men when will your injured race return to purity and universal peace when shall the pomp and pageantry of place and all the clashing elements of party cease when shall the mental blindness of the soul by truth enlightened and by knowledge taught resolve to free itself from that control with which the kingdoms of the earth are fraught when will mankind embrace the just and true by acting on the proverb old and wise to others do as ye'd be done unto and envious thoughts and evil deeds despise when these things come and come they surely will for man by nature is humane and good he will not ever quarrel maim and kill and make a trade of shedding human blood when wisdom's blessings holy pure sublime are showered upon the nations of the earth then the longed hoped for fervid prayed for time shall come and freedom wake again to birth hail wished for time hail holy freedom's reign slaves of the earth bow ye before the shrine let all your voices swell the glorious strain in praise of love and liberty divine beauty a poem inscribed to miss mary alice halley one beauty is seen in sun and shade in garden sweet and woodland glade in greenwoods gay on mountains high in the gorgeous glow of the summer sky at early morn in the streaks of light when day subdues the power of night when the blessed sun comes forth again rising in strength from the eastern main filling all space with his radiant beams and drinking the light from the dancing streams or when his dazzling and scorching ray in glory burns at meridian day or when he sinks as it were to rest in the luscious lap of the golden west beauty is seen when the sun is gone and night puts her sable mantle on when the trembling moonbeams shed their light and the clouds career in majestic might when myriad stars in splendour born the firmament's vast expanse adorn when the darkness all creation shrouds and the lightning severs the sulphurous clouds to the vision of man tis everywhere in fire and water earth and air in frost and hail in snow and rain on the barren heath and the fertile plain in the winter's sleet and the summer's shower in the wild as well as the cultured flower the spirit of beauty reigns sublime in every land and in every clime and oh what rapture the soul enjoys when we gaze on the clear unclouded skies and feel that god doth delight to impart his unbounded love to the grateful heart two beauty oh where doth beauty dwell in the shady grove and the flowery dell in the palace hall and the peaceful cot in the cavern lone and the crystal grot in bowers where birds delight to sing in the craggy clefts where corals cling in the far-off fearful forest glooms where the unseen wild flower springs and blooms in the wide and expansive prairies green where the foot of man hath never been beauty dwells in the depths of woods surrounded by nature's solitudes 
where no sound is heard the livelong day save the fearful howl of the beast of prey in the ruined tower where the ivy grows in the north amid the eternal snows in the balmy south where the fruitful vine makes glad the soul with the soothing wine in the east in the west and in every place where grandeur is blended with lovely grace in the ocean's caves fair beauty dwells mid a myriad singing silvery shells on the towering cliff where the eagle soars on the rugged rock where the night wind roars on the fearful top of the alpine heights where the wonderful view the soul affrights and the dizzying head and the reeling brains tell that glorious godlike grandeur reigns beauty it dwells on the ocean's breast and beauty abides in the linnet's nest beauty it dwells in the queenly hall where the great of the earth keep festival and beauty it dwells in the humble shade that shelters the head of the cottage maid then blessed be he who gave its birth and sent his fair image o'er all the earth three when and where is the voice of beauty heard when the trembling leaves are by night winds stirred whenever fair woman she prays or sighs when the breezes blow from the southern skies fanning fond love with a flame of fire or weaking to sound the aeolian lyre or touching the chords of the kindred soul or freeing sweet childhood from harsh control or giving its flight to the prisoned bird oh then is the voice of beauty heard it is heard in the humming of busy bees it is heard in the quivering of willow trees it is heard in the rush of the rapid river it speaketh in nature for ever and ever it is heard by the maiden in midnight dreams it is heard in the babbling of singing streams at the morning's dawn and at evening hours its voice from a thousand warblers pours at the noon of night when the nightingale with melody sweet fills grove and vale it steals o'er the charms and enraptured sense like a herald of god's omnipotence it is heard in the whistling wind that blows it is heard in the rippling brook that flows it is heard in the music of marriage bells it is heard from the nuns in their cloistered cells it is heard in the burr of the insect's wings it is heard from the lark as he soars and sings it is heard in the shriek of the sea-mew wild it is heard in the laugh of the little child it is heard on the mountain and down in the dale over all other sounds it doth sweetly prevail then glory to him to whom glory is due that made the earth green and the firmament blue that filleth the world with his beauty and love and sendeth in plenty his gifts from above the poet of nature inscribed to john bolton rogerson esq poet of nature thou canst see each beauty in the works of god there is a living charm for thee in rolling wave and fruitful sod the splendour of the sun's bright rays gives rapture to thy glowing mind thou strikes the lyre and songs of praise commingle sweetly with the wind delightful visions glad thine eyes when on the lake the moonlight beams the glorious star bespangled skies bring to thy soul elysian dreams the balmy breath of summer's morn that kisses fragrance from the flowers the pearly dewdrops on the thorn the cool refreshing sunny showers the music of the babbling brooks the song of birds the hum of bees the springs that drip in sylvan nooks the ever trembling willow trees the waving cornfields brightly green the clearest day the darkest night all works of god wherever seen imbue thy heart with pure delight nature in every mood and form wakes thine imaginative soul the awful grandeur of the storm when vivid lightnings thunders roll the snow-clad hills the flowery vale the cataracts dash the tempest shower proclaim aloud the wondrous tale of nature's god's almighty power oh for a seraph's tongue to sing the beauties of the varying year delightful joyous dancing spring before my sight doth first appear the lily and the primrose pure the violet and the bluebell wild daisies whose charms did first allure my footsteps when a very child april and may 
and all the train that follow in your footsteps free when birds resume their songs again and buds burst forth from every tree when wild flowers spangle all the plains and verdure green adorns the meads when sunny showers and genial rains quicken to life the fruitful seeds then come the golden summer days and rich luxuriance wakes to birth in the clear stream the troutlet plays prolific life fills air and earth the luscious fruit hangs on the trees and butterflies are on the wing myriads of insects birds and bees a never-ceasing anthem sing next autumn comes and forest leaves are yellowed by the summer's heat the corn is cut and bound in sheaves and ripened as the full-eared wheat god with an over-bounteous hand hath sent the life-sustaining bread plenty is scattered o'er the land and even the ungrateful fed winter comes last his piercing breath stops the glad course of singing streams bird bee and flowers now sleep in death and the red sun withholds his beams the icicle hangs on the spray covered with snow the earth is white gloomy and dull and short is day dreary and dark and cold is night seasons and changes come and go but beauty reigneth everywhere in heaven above on earth below in raging sea in sky in air and thou whose soul hath quaffed the sweets which poesy alone can yield thou lovest to haunt the green retreats in grove and garden bower and field poet of nature favoured child to thee a gracious boon is given thy earthly cares are all beguiled with a foretaste of god and heaven then grateful be and tune thy lyre let holy zeal thy soul imbue praise him with fervent holy fire to whom all glorious praise is due a dirge to the memory of william grant esq the philanthropist inscribed to j t brandwood halstead esq mourn gentle muse with sympathy sincere attune thy lyre to sorrow's plaintive strain prepare thyself to shed the heartfelt tear that generous tear which ne'er was shed in vain awake thy nobler feelings into birth and breathe a prayer for dear departed worth the scythe of time the sting of clammy death with thousands daily feeds the earthy clod millions of mortals have resigned their breath to stand before the judgment seat of god but ah for human nature there are few whose lives and deaths are righteous pure and true goodness of heart bestowed by bounteous heaven to cheer and succour poverty and woe source of pure joy in godlike mercy given from whence the streams of sympathy do flow tis thine to give the suffering soul relief tis thine to soothe the wailing cry of grief feeling divine the man possessing thee is blessed indeed hath he the power to give and wheresoe'er on earth his biding be the prayer of thousands is that he may live live to do good can prayer of human kind sooner than that the throne of mercy find our father god omnipotent and wise eternal infinite and good to thee we raise in gratitude and love our tearful eyes and swell our voices to thy glorious praise the friend we loved is dead but we rejoice that now he walks with thee in paradise he was thine image truly and he spent a life like just zacchaeus without guile as did the good samaritan where'er he went he poured upon the wounded wine and oil oh he hath often dried the widow's tear protected poverty and calmed the orphan's fear for ever blessed be grant's most honoured name unlike the warrior with the battle-brand in peace he trod the road to lasting fame a living blessing to his fatherland sweet consolation followed in his tract advancing grief at his approach fled back benevolence and truth smiled in his face philanthropy and love beamed in his eye his soul contained the seeds of perfect grace his mind was cloudless as the clear blue sky he sought the haunts of misery 
and there made glad the heart where erst reigned dark despair alas that he should die men loved so well but god hath willed and all must now resign his green old age near fourscore years did tell and he fulfilled on earth the great design but he hath left his mantle on another so well deserving the sweet name of brother ye men of wealth of greatness and of power be william grant your beacon star and guide remember death can in one little hour level with dust all earthly pomp and pride but he whose noble soul with bounty gives though dead to sight in grateful memory lives and ye the poor of earth whose lot is hard who toil and sweat to earn your daily bread that godlike man who did your cries regard whose tears flowed for your griefs that man is dead let every heart breathe the unuttered prayer that god may make him his especial care mayflowers i love the modest mayflowers that adorn the hills and dales that bloom in sunny summer bowers and in quiet rural vales that gem the earth in many a place with lilac tint and lovely grace i love them for they bring to me remembrance of those happy days when childhood fraught with mirth and glee in many a verdant meadow plays and rambles through the woodland dell to pluck the flowers it loves so well when gentle rains which fall in spring have clothed the fertile earth in green when first the lark essays to sing the modest mayflowers then are seen they please the mind and glad the eye and tell that summer days draw nigh the jessamine and sweet red rose the lily and the daffodils the daisy and each flower that grows upon the brink of murmuring rills violets of every shade and hue i love them all with fervour true the garden beds are full of sweets of dahlias fair and undefiled but more i love the green retreats where grow the modest mayflowers wild spontaneous springing from the sod cultured alone by nature's god sweet recollection fondly flings a charm of love around the heart and sights of old familiar things do never from the mind depart we see through time and bygone years all that affection's spell endears what pure delight dear memory gives associations full of joy old age again with rapture lives in soul a laughing happy boy twining with glee the garland gay of field flowers in the month of may friendship love and truth ben ibrahim an ancient sage who flourished in a bygone age and gained an everlasting fame which hath immortalized his name pursued with persevering zeal the pleasing path of wisdom's rays and felt as those alone can feel who of mankind do merit praise his generous soul with good was fraught and kindness marked his every deed the youth philosophy he taught and counsel gave to all in need but fools alas with envious eyes ever reject the counsels of the wise and with ben ibrahim such was the case for men whom ignorance had rendered base guided by evil thoughts reports had spread to bring dishonour on his worthy head evil reports and foul in malice born subjecting him to hatred fear and scorn asserting falsely that he held converse with midnight fiends whose vile unholy curse would fall with fearful vengeance upon those that sought advice or madly dared repose in him the least of confidence or trust counting him cursed and his ways unjust all shunned his path with superstitious fear and none his habitation ventured near until a youth more wise than all the rest having a thirst for knowledge in his breast before ben ibrahim one evening stood craving his counsel wise of ill and good father he said thy sage advice i seek for it will glad my heart to hear thee speak thy grave opinion of this world below whence cometh man and whither will he go what is his destiny his end and aim will he return to dust from whence he came or rise immortal to a world of bliss if he but lead a godly life in this did the great maker when the breath he gave 
give no good qualities the soul to save say shall the heart whose faith in god is firm furnish but loathsome food to feed the worm the youth thus ceased then rose the reverend sage his beard was whitened with the frost of age meek were his manners heavenly was his face his soul it was adorned with every grace my son he said lend me thy serious ear whilst i with words of truth dispel thy fear when first the form of man so nobly grand came undefiled from out his maker's hand to him were given these gifts from heaven the essence of true life a godlike mind sown with the seeds of friendship for his kind from whence spring forth a strong desire to do to others as he would be done unto the fertile earth did bounteous produce give that man in peace and happiness might live grateful he was for blessings from above and gratitude inspired his heart with love love for that power divine the great first cause primeval source of nature and her laws holy celestial love parent of peace before whose power shall strife and discord cease conquering all hearts the stubborn and the weak making the brutish mild the savage meek giving man faith in man o'er all the earth from whose sweet influence sympathy had birth my son with life these heavenly gifts began and life eternal is bequeathed to man sure guide where to and beacon of the mind the rays of truth are shed upon mankind error and ignorance before them flee the slaves of superstition they will free soon as the glorious flag its wide unfurled the light of god shall then illume the world virtue shall reign in spring's eternal youth and men shall practise friendship love and truth the youth with rapture heard the accents flow with sympathy he felt his bosom glow unconsciously the tear bedimmed his eye that powerful feeling which diffuses joy ran through his frame his heart felt truly then he loved the meanest of his fellow men. End of part two. Part three of Songs for the Millions and Other Poems by Benjamin Stott. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Miscellaneous Poems Continued. Praise to the Deity respectfully inscribed to my sincere friend john dickinson i thank my god with truth and zeal that he hath made my soul to feel sweet poesy and love that he unto my mind hath given a foretaste of himself and heaven and joys that reign above oh that my fervent tongue could tell the witchery of that charming spell that prompts me to adore nature's first cause the living god whose breath doth bless the fertile sod whose throne i kneel before i bless him with a prayer sincere that he hath made my voice to cheer the crushed and breaking heart i bless him for that holy fire which doth my ardent soul inspire to plead oppression's part whene'er i look abroad on earth a joy ecstatic springs to birth within my humble breast at morn when day has first begun at noon or when the setting sun sinks in the golden west in calm and meditative night when myriad stars have lent their light and hang like gems on high or when majestic clouds career before the moon that shines so clear in the expansive sky at every time in every place doth my enraptured vision trace the beautiful and true in gratitude and love i raise my voice to sing his glorious praise to whom all praise is due i know that he doth love to see his image happy fair and free and merciful and wise i know that men whose minds are pure who shield the weak and help the poor find favour in his eyes then blessed be thy name for ever great god of life and light the giver eternal good and just thou who art ever prone to save the shackled serf and suffering slave in thee we put our trust 
the child's death cool was the breeze of the summer's night and pale was the face of the silvery moon the stars of heaven shone clear and bright in the golden time of delicious june the flowers were shut and the birds asleep all nature was hushed and calm and mild when a mother with heartfelt grief did weep as she gazed on the face of her dying child the stillness of midnight's solemn hour was broken by wailings of painful breath the sick child struggled with feeble power against the approach of powerful death the mother bent over its wasted frame in her heart was hope in her face despair and when the poor sufferer lisped her name she appealed to heaven with tears and prayer but relentless death mortality's king was hovering there to receive his prey he flung his dart and the cold cold sting set free the soul from its house of clay the mercy of god gave the child relief and the mother drooped over that lowly bed her tears flowed fast with unfeigned grief when she saw that the joy of her heart was dead fair morning came and the sun rose bright his warm rays opened the sleeping flowers the fruitful earth drank the dews of night and birds made vocal the fields and bowers the face of nature in sunlight smiled and morn's first mists from the earth were driven but the mother still knelt by her lost dead child and commended its innocent soul to heaven another day and a funeral train were pacing slowly the churchyard through they gave to the earth its clay again in a spot over which the daisies grew the mother looked up to the clear blue skies while the coffin was covered with soil and sod and gratitude beamed in her tearful eyes for she knew that her child was in heaven with god sonnet to robert rose esq the bard of colour author of the cypress wreath etc immortal rose thy soul delighting lyre is prodigal of harmony and sweet enchanting strains which fill the mind with intellectual fire and all the dignity of man sustains nature thy muse doth cherish and inspire as fruitful sod is fed by genial rains bard of the west my earnest heart's desire is that all earthly good on thee may wait that melody and music may conspire to rule thy destiny and guide thy fate blessing thy sympathetic soul with joys elate and gift of poesy for mortals to admire producing godlike thought from thy free generous mind champion of moral right true friend of humankind reflections on the power and goodness of the deity how beauteous and wonderful the works of nature are surpassing bright and glorious is the twinkling evening star the sun how hot and powerful the moon how fair and bright how clear and light the summer day how dark the wintry night how fearful and dreadful are the earthquake and the storm enchanting to the human eye is the dazzling rainbow's form the rolling clouds the raging sea the all deluging rain what varied feelings do they cause of pleasure and of pain how fierce are man's passions and how mild his reasoning soul with unerring order do the planets in their orbits roll the whole stupendous arch of heaven revealing to the sight our great creator's matchless works his majesty and might then let us view with gratitude the gifts which he bestows each herb and tree that yieldeth fruit each rippling brook that flows are emblems of his goodness with an equal hand he gives his blessings to the monarch and the meanest slave that lives tis man alone that causeth all the misery we see and then great god of nature he attributes it to thee thy justice dispensations he hath named a scourging rod and ascribed the suffering of the poor to the providence of god although thy true and perfect laws to all the world proclaim that thy mercy and beneficence are for evermore the same for thou didst ne'er withhold thy gifts e'en from ungrateful man and thy goodness is the same to-day as twas when time began oh that mankind would but observe the laws which thou hast given 
then would this green and fertile earth be truly made a heaven a realised paradise a never-failing portal through which the whole of humankind might enter life immortal the greenwood shade oh the sweetest spot that nature's made is the splendid glorious greenwood shade where the sun peeps through the trees at morn and the huntsman sounds his bugle horn where the forester chases the graceful deer and the rivulet runs so bright and clear there are beauties more than tongue can tell in the greenwood shade and the forest dell oh the greenwood shade the greenwood shade where the fond youth meets the lovely maid and blushingly doth there impart the tale that soothes and charms the heart where the troth is pledged and the vow is given fond memory makes that spot a heaven there are beauties more than tongue can tell in the greenwood shade and the forest dell oh the greenwood shade the greenwood shade where the long grass waves with the bold broad blade where the beautiful fern and the wild flowers grow and the limpid springs pure waters flow where the elfin sprite and the fairy plays and the feathered songsters chant their lays there are beauties more than tongue can tell in the greenwood shade and the forest dell oh the greenwood shade the greenwood shade where youths and maidens oft have strayed when the silvery moon was shining bright in the golden hour of the summer's night when the glow-worm's light was soft and clear and the nightingale's song was sweet to hear there are beauties more than tongue can tell in the greenwood shade and the forest dell oh the greenwood shade is a cool retreat from the noontide sunbeams summer's heat and an awful grandeur reigneth there when the lightning clears the sultry air when the strong broad trees are snapped and broke by the mighty power of the thunderstroke there are beauties more than tongue can tell in the greenwood shade and the forest dell to a wild bluebell pretty flower to thee my muse her humble mead will not refuse for unto thee hath nature given the sweet the soft blue tint of heaven how delicately formed thy frame lovely thy cups and sweet thy name wildest flower of azure blue fresh and pure as the morning dew each zephyr wind and breath of air doth lowly bow thy texture fair thy fragile stem the while it grows waves in the summer wind that blows in thee the contemplative mind will the fair work of nature find though simple as thou art bluebell no limner's skill can e'er excel the splendid shade the native hue of thy pure flowers so bright and blue so unassuming meek and mild gracing the heath and woodland wild nourished by nature fair and free emblem of love and liberty lines written on presenting j c prince's hours with the muses to an affectionate sister this pledge of affection i give unto thee tis a wreath that is woven from nature's sweet bowers and my prayer is devout that it ever may be a solace and pleasure in fugitive hours there is nothing so pleasing upon this fair earth as the feeling which maketh the heart to grow warm and the spirit of love which from god had its birth is made more delightful by melody's charm this dear little book is a treasure a gem a fountain of knowledge from purest of springs though the offspring of poverty none can condemn the love which it breathes for all glorious things its pages are pure and its sentiments good unmixed with licentiousness ribald or jest to the mind it affordeth that heavenly food which god hath bestowed on the souls of the blest o oh, may thou for ever it carefully store tis the champion of liberty freedom and love it contains all the virtues that sages adore on the green earth below or the bright skies above the reverie a lady sat in a summer bower watching in june a passing shower she thought of many a bygone day and she thought of him that was far away she thought of the days of her youth and joy and a tear pearled in her soft blue eye fond memory carried her back for years and a vision she saw through her gushing tears twas a picture of childhood laughing and gay 
and her youthful companions were at their play in a beautiful meadow so spacious and wide where the daisy and buttercup bloomed in their pride where the white and red roses that grew on the thorn spread their fragrance abroad in the breath of the morn where the sweet honeysuckle gave food to the bee and all things abounded with gladness and glee oh that picture was pleasing to gaze upon it was seen for a moment and then it was gone and her vision was changed to that blessed time when the beauty of woman is truly sublime when the heart with affection and fondness flows and the blush of the maiden outrivals the rose when the bright eye doth sparkle with innocent mirth and the sweet witching spell of first love hath its birth now a thousand glad scenes that had long been confined in the cells of her memory stole through her mind and then through her dazzling tears were seen the noble form of her brave eugene and the lovely grotto hid deep in the grove where first they had pledged their faithful love but with that fond remembrance dear the reverie ended and with maiden fear she felt the keen pangs of hope long deferred and she fled from her bower like a frightened bird conscience there is within the guilty breast a never-ceasing gnawing pain crime lets its victims have no rest they seek for balmy sleep in vain the sunshine of the soul is clouded and horrors rack the aching sense the mind with troubled thoughts is crowded the storm within is fierce intense and oh how wretched is the fool whose heart the baser passions rule the blessed light of midday sun which shines serene all o'er the earth an object is for him to shun whose conduct owns no moral worth cursed is that wretch the veriest slave that hates the dark and fears the light whose life is loathsome as the grave whose actions black as winter's night he lives a knave and dies a fool whose heart the baser passions rule then know thyself thou son of man and strive to conquer vain desires be virtuous and do all thou can to quench those inward burning fires that heat thy blood and mad thy brain and bring more grief than tongue can tell that cause thee sorrow woe and pain and end at last in death and hell be sure he dies a wretched fool whose heart the baser passions rule a song of freedom the lover may sing of his lady's charms and the bacchanal boast of his wine the soldier may tell of his deeds in arms but a nobler theme shall be mine i will sing of the joys that freedom gives whenever its blessings are seen and there is not an honest heart that lives but will join in the song i ween my motto for ever and ever shall be success to the friends of the fair and the free the traitor may scoff and the tyrant may scorn and the lordling may sneer at my lay but its burden shall cheer the oppressed and forlorn with the hopes of a happier day it shall waken the slave to a sense of his wrongs and his soul shall delight in the strain it shall tell the poor bondsman what to him belongs and teach him to burst from his chain my motto for ever and ever shall be success to the friends of the fair and the free i will not debase god's image on earth by lauding the despot's deeds i will not praise that as an action of worth for which common humanity bleeds i will not rejoice at foul rapine and war nor exult o'er the blood that is spilt i never will honour the conqueror's car nor glorify that which is guilt my motto for ever and ever shall be success to the friends of the fair and the free my song it shall praise the promoter of peace it shall bless the benevolent heart it shall pray that prosperity soon may increase and that strife from the world may depart it shall honour the man of the generous mind whose bosom with sympathy glows it shall ever admire the friends of mankind and despise their contemptible foes my motto for ever and ever shall be success to the friends of the fair and the free an address written expressly for and delivered at the shakespeare lodge soiree in aid of the funds of the general charitable relief fund in connection with that lodge of the independent order of odd fellows manchester unity manchester district 
january the twenty third eighteen forty three philosophers have said and sages taught that evil passions held in base control the minds of men engendering evil thought and making brutal the immortal soul but are their doctrines true let all inquire who love their god their kindred and their race the humblest heart in duty should aspire the falsehood of this principle to trace let us observe man under every form when danger threatens or when death is near in bloody war on land at sea in storm where self-protection is begot by fear in court and cabinet where temptations lie in wealthy affluence or more humble state in poverty extreme where hundreds die and leave us to bemoan their wretched fate could we but see the motives in the mind of priest at prayer or soldier shedding blood though opposite their actions we should find each were desirous of doing greatest good but why go seek for proof of man's intent beyond the sphere in which ourselves do move a band of brothers virtually bent to sow the seeds of friendship truth and love our order founded for that godlike end to shield the weak to shelter the forlorn to soothe the sick the friendless to befriend fearless alike of envious frown or scorn odd fellowship thy fruits have shown the world that man by nature is both good and just under thy peaceful banner wide unfurled thousands have placed their hope their faith and trust thou hast made followers of humble men that earn their bread by hard but honest toil that till the ground that spin the flax and then in deeds of charity their leisure hours beguile o oh, glorious proof that man is good in heart opposed to theory or speculation wild foremost to take the weeping widow's part to feed and clothe the helpless orphan child to seek the chamber where the sick doth lie to give the starving life sustaining bread to watch the wretched in their hovels die and drop the tear of sorrow o'er the dead blessed odd fellowship thou art indeed a gem worth all the treasure that the earth contains more to be prized than costly diadem or that great sea whose sands are golden grains god grant the prayer that thou may spread afar giving relief where'er thy footsteps go upholding peace and deprecating war making a friend of him that was thy foe i see before me now thy sons of worth men that have worshipped at thy glorious shrine whose object is to spread o'er all the earth the joy of friendship love and truth divine this night we meet in pleasure but our aim is great and noble though our means are less we know distress upon us has a claim and we are anxious to relieve distress our lodge was first and foremost to begin the righteous work in which we are now engaged honour for ever to the name of win friend of the poor the helpless and the aged his generous mind gave birth unto the plan that brings forth blessings holy pure sublime that binds in firmer friendship man to man and proves that honest poverty is not a crime then let us seek each other's griefs to share and in well-doing let us weary not our brethren shall not linger in despair if to relieve them we the power have got so shall our actions live when we are dead and men unborn unto our graves draw near telling their children as the tear they shed an honest man and faithful friend lies here an acrostic to my well-beloved friend john critchley prince author of hours with the muses etc john critchley prince all honour to thy name oh may the world ne'er slight thee nor thy lyre how well deserving of immortal fame now stand thy sweet productions may their sire contentment and true happiness enjoy receiving honour from the grateful poor if ever poet's heart did truly try to free the slave and firmly to secure complete and perfect justice for his race heaven can bear witness thine that harp to be long mayst thou scorn the pride of pomp and place enchanting minstrel champion of the free youthful and buoyant ever be thy muse portraying nature in her loveliest hues rejoicing in the woodlands and the dells in limpid streams in springs and crystal wells never forsaking truth 
thy writings do evince confidence in human nature no other poet since england produced her byron hath yet excelled her prince the fate of marian the lovely maiden marian was fair unto the sight though but a poor and humble girl in cottage garb bedight no silver gear her hair bedecked no silken sheen had she yet her form was like the soul would paint an angel's form to be twas in a sweet delightful vale that she was born and reared her dying breath that spot did bless which memory had endeared there had she played amid the flowers as guileless as the dove all that the mind could wish to be or heart could wish to love let other bards their harps entune for knight and lady gay be mine the humble homely task to weave the plaintive lay which pleads for injured innocence and breathes the heartfelt prayer for the gentle village maiden heart-broken with despair scarce had the tender bloom of years which childhood calls its own left her in virgin purity like a lily yet unblown when the fell seducer came with guile and plucked the lovely gem with ruthless hands and wicked heart from its dear parent stem he bore her to a city thronged with splendour and with sin and with unholy lust he strove her gentle heart to win o oh, gracious god thy mercy grant for grievous to relate he covered her with guilty shame and left her to her fate she fell from virtue and the crime weighed heavy on her soul her burning tears in vain were shed her grief knew no control that fatal bowl that bane of life within her grasp was laid and overcome with woe she drank a second time betrayed full many a day poor marian lived in infamy and shame her purity for ever lost dear woman's only fame though by luxury surrounded yet her feeling heart it bled she knew she was the guilty thing which virtue shuns with dread o oh, bitterness of grief to be the slave of lust and power that maddening thought her soul consumed through each succeeding hour and oft when sober sadness reigned intensely did she feel the inward shame which vacant looks and stifled sighs reveal the latter story of her life it was sorrowful to tell what vice and crime and misery unto her lot befell but soon did time a ruin leave all sickly sad and pale of the once loved maiden marian the lily of the vale at length worn out by wretchedness and overpowering grief the welcome icy hand of death came unto her relief a horrid sight of loathsomeness she breathed her dying groan the inmates of a lazar house unpitied and unknown just retribution calls aloud but calls alas in vain for vengeance on the villain's head who caused this woe and pain with great and mighty of the land he standeth side by side in all the pomp and pageantry of ostentatious pride the listening crowd with seeming joy applaud his every word and beauteous eyes upon him beam as if he were adored all are subservient to his will for he possesses wealth which everything on earth commands save happiness and health one awful truth this simple tale endeavours to unfold that crime is glossed and virtue lost for thrice accursed gold the foul seducer takes his seat amongst the wise and brave and the broken-hearted marian lies in a pauper's grave the love of nature nature i love all creatures for thy sake but chiefly man who is estranged from thee princes poets sabbath creation i love thee in every form in the herb and the fruit in the flower and the tree in the calm and the rain in the sunshine and storm the fair face of nature is dear unto me and my heart overfloweth with reverence true when the sun is bright and the skies are blue for joy doth my soul with love imbue the pebbled brook i love to hear run rippling through the forest glade and the glassy stream to me is dear where the stag reflects in the woodland shade each change of scene fresh wonder brings for beauty is perfect in fearful things 
in the toad's bright eyes and the scorpion's wings i am pleased with the chirp of the tiny bird with the hum of the bee and the fragrance of flowers and my soul is charmed when the thrush is heard carolling sweet in the summer bowers i look with delight and expression mild on the playful lamb and the laughing child and the daisy that grows in the woodland wild when the raging sea with tempest roars and the sinking ship no succour finds that mighty one my soul adores whose power alone can still the winds and hush the storm and calm the wave and safety give to men who rave with maddened fear of watery grave the planet earth how strange how grand by heaven bequeathed to mortal men composed of sea and fertile land and far as human eye can ken surrounded by the clear blue skies where worlds on worlds in myriads rise till man's imagination dies my humble soul shall ne'er presume to pierce the boundless realms of space the mind presumptuous lives in gloom that fain would nature's secrets trace the life of man were better spent were all as heaven doth wish content to share the blessings god hath sent glorious creation pure and fair boundless magnificent and wise one mighty power with wondrous care all nature's light and life supplies my grateful soul shall homage pay to him that ruleth night and day whom stars and sun and moon obey an appeal for bread monopolis your grasp relax and let the starving poor be fed ye senators repeal the tax the odious impious tax on bread oh hearken to a nation's cry let not the famished millions die ye who the laws of britain make treat not a nation's voice with scorn for justice and for mercy's sake repeal the famine tax on corn think on the children of the poor who hunger's pinching pangs endure if ye would lessen death and crime let life's sustaining bread be had think legislators think in time gaunt famine drives its victims mad the patient poor are starved beware o oh, drive them not to dark despair unfetter commerce let our trade be free as are the winds of heaven obey your god who all things made and let the fruits of earth be given to him that tills the fruitful soil to all that sweat with willing toil steal not your hearts when justice pleads shut not your ears when mercy cries the heart of suffering nature bleeds your fellow creature droops and dies give bread to all with liberal hand if ye would save your fatherland the coming of spring an ode it comes again the blessed spring and in its gladsome train doth bring the happy hours and fertile showers the bursting buds and welcome flowers the birds take wing and sweetly sing in groves and gardens fields and bowers again the primroses are seen again the grass is new and green again the sun's bright radiant beams flutter and dance in the singing streams again the morning sky is blue and the mists are melted to crystal dew which sparkle like gems on the grassy spears and fill the flowers with fragrant tears again the bee in the valley hums and the cheerful cuckoo comes and the sunny days in length and light subdue and shorten the space of night dear joyful spring thy presence brings a thousand fair familiar things nature again resumes a dress of foliage full of loveliness and through the fresh-leaved forest trees floats rosy health on the balmy breeze the husbandman renews his toil the quickened grains creep through the soil and in the warm reviving earth millions of insect things have birth sweet pleasant time when morning breaks and the light comes forth in silvery streaks severing the darkened skies in twain and tinging with gold the sea's broad main when chanticleer proclaims the day and the lark renews his warbling lay when the sun o'ercomes stern winter's powers and dissolves the snow-built clouds in showers when birds do mate and from bush and tree 
pour forth their melodious harmony delightful spring nature's first-born in time's eternal maze the morn thy rosy presence fills the soul with joys twere sinful to control joys that inspire the heart to raise the song of gratitude and praise and love to him whose gentle force doth bring the seasons in their course who rules the stars and guides the sun who is and was ere time begun a myriad worlds obey his nod and all creation own him god end of part three end of songs for the millions by benjamin stott read by phil benson